The Everyman Radio Podcast. New music. Hoping for a sincere performance, but open to finding the moment. To finding out where I'm headed now. Looking for a sign of disaster So I can make it there faster I'm weighing the consequences out
Welcome, everybody, to this week's episode. We really appreciate you joining us. This podcast really shows us how we can all learn, live, and thrive off of each other. By sharing our knowledge through our conversations, we will impart some knowledge whilst learning ourselves how to progress even further. Here is your host. Did I want that? I didn't. I don't know. Oh well. Um, oh, it, well, it says recording. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Um, let's make it full screen so I can. Right. Hello. Um, <laughs> So I've got this big bulb, but <laughs> something's not quite right because it just flashes. Um, but uh, hello, Gavin. Welcome to Everyman Radio. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Okay. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, good, thanks. And, um, and we have Claire here as well. And so... Um, um, what's your role here, sorry, Claire, or you help help um, Gavin? Well, yeah, I mean, I suppose, well, I actually illustrated the book and I published the book for him as well. Um, so, and obviously I tend, in, in situations like this, I'm kind of Gavin's voice as well. So, I mean, um, as you can tell, he has, he has a speech impediment. So I'm kind of his voice when it comes to the promotional side of things. We... I mean, online, he's absolutely incredible. You've seen his writing ability is amazing. So I'm kind of just that help for him when it, um, when it comes like to a podcast or, well, we haven't had enough time to actually get on physically promote the book due to COVID. So um, yeah, this, this time I'm kind of just a little bit of a helping hand for a voice for him. But yeah, so I, I kind of was the, um, the illustrator and the publisher of the book. Um, and yeah, a lot. It's been, it's been a really crazy past few months really, really <laughs> yes it has mm. seems a never ending just when we think it's finally over i don't know it just seems to keep on going and going yeah <sighs> and i think very very frustrating in our situation because i think gavin's book is incredible it's, it's a fantastic message for, for disability and we're not able to physically get out there to promote it to the right mm-hmm. audience. So he can't hold any author events. We can't physically promote it. So a big part of our marketing campaign and promotional campaign, just it can't, it can't actually happen at the minute. So um, yeah, mm-hmm. looking to a lot of online um, resources and obviously getting his blogs up and running. So we're building his author platform. That seems to be the best way forward for him. And I mean, like, you know, he's, he's constantly writing his blogs at the moment, which <laughs> I've had him on a strict plan with because he's just loving doing them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think that's um, it's the only way we've been able to really promote the book oh, right. through social media at the moment. Mm. No, that's good. Um, yeah, it's fascinating, I think. Well, I think, um, yeah, I think I... Um, mentioned to Gavin, um, I was just very excited uh, because my son is called Max. <laughs> yeah. so, um, but, but Max is your dog, though, right, Gavin? Yeah, you write it all back, yeah. Well, <laughs> that way, that way, it's in them, yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's the inspiration behind the name. So yeah. he's got Max and, and that's what... <laughs> I think we all do that. I have my own book range, which is Curious Lola, and my dog is Lola. So I think oh, it, right. just seems, it just seems to happen that you have you use your dog's name as reference to... <laughs> to well, um, well, yeah. It just seems to work. <laughs> So that was another thing we had in common that we both used our dogs as the main characters in our book. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. I'm just thinking. 
because I think my sister's dog is called Lola. I think. Oh. <laughs> is it naughty? Because <laughs> my that 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 was what was the lead behind mine with my dog. Naughty. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I don't know it well enough. <laughs> um, I remember it when I it was very young, and it would just bark. But they, not a. It's a small dog. It's a cavachon. Yeah. So it. Ah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it would just be yapping. Yeah, yeah. It's like a noisy yapping dog. Um I don't know. I'm excited. Um very soon in a week, maybe it's taking a bit longer, but I'm going to be moving into a new flat about half a mile from here. And because of the um, the tenancy, uh, and because this is a council property that I'm in, um, the tenancy on this new one is I'm allowed pets. <laughs> so obviously I won't do that straight away, but I'm looking forward to, um, yeah, dog yeah, hunting <laughs> and getting my own dog that would be fantastic yeah um yeah it's definitely a good reference as an author it worked <laughs> yeah. yeah and so uh how many books have you written or is this your first yeah yeah but it's Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> There's definitely more to come. <laughs> yeah, more. Um, oh. yeah, so Max, is, Max and the Magic Wish is just the beginning. Um, so I think you have six books lined up. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. all, all part of the series. So it's still all about Max. Um, okay. Just because of COVID. So like it would be Max, do your homework. Max, wash the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of all centered around Mrs. Winkleton as well, so the fortune teller um, on on the book, and that's a main part of the book as well. Um, so it's it's very much centered around the magic aspect of it, but in reference to disability as well. So um, so rather than making a standard disability book, Gavin is a very positive person. Yes. And that, that absolutely shines throughout his, his writing. And that's his main that's his main goal, that's his main why he wants to actually write the books, not only just for children to be inspired by it, but for for parents to understand yeah. children and their, their children, what they're going through with a disability from a from a child's perspective. So I think that's why the book is doing incredibly well in a, in a learning platform as well. So we get a lot of videos sent through to us um, oh. from carers that, uh, that, have, that have bought the book and have taken it into, um, into their schools to actually work with, um, with the, their, um, the people that they work with. And it, I mean, we've had Wrexham Football Club is, is, is using the book in the sensory hub for um for children that come in um we've had hospitals use the book it's it's behind the scenes in in the right niche the main audience mm. it's absolutely finding it and it's getting to it so um yeah it's it's really interesting and i think you know for us moving forward and especially for gavin like there's incredible things that's happening um I don't know if he wants to reveal, obviously, about the books being picked up to be t um, turned into a stage play as well. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had a really good meeting last week, and we have one next week in reference to that as well. So behind the scenes, the right people is picking the book up and and doing the right things with it, which is making a difference um, to the lives of children with disabilities, which is which is definitely the niche that we want to get to. Um, getting the book into the right hands. So um, yeah, there's lots of incredible things that's happening behind the scenes. But I think we've both had many moments where we've cried mm -hmm. because the book has made a difference to the right the right children. And I think that's 
that was the whole reason of getting Max to market. Yeah, so, um, I yeah. think, yeah, that is uh, just a very important thing. Um, often forgetting, often forget, forgot, <laughs> I can't even speak. <laughs> often, often forgotten that um, uh, well, children, well, when they read books, they will actually take in a lot of information and it will actually have a very positive beneficial effect on them in ways that we don't really know. So yeah, getting feedback I, like that. Um, yeah, I think from Gavin's perspective though, I mean, I, I feel like I'm talking for him, but I know <laughs> it's what he would want me to say. Um, it is because of his own personal experience that nobody knows better than him what to put in that book. Mm. So nobody, nobody can express how it feels to have terrible palsy other than Gavin. And that's what he's put into the book. So that is what I think is so special that even though if you read his blogs and he's, he's become very graphic in his blogs, which is incredible because it's helping a lot of people to mm. understand his personality. And you, you can see that he's really consistent now between the book and who he's becoming as an author, which is helping. And that's how the book got picked up the stage because they, they, they loved the fact that he was so true to the book, who he is as a character as well. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I wish him all the best in in getting his story out there and making a difference with it because it, it is making a difference. Absolutely is. Yeah, and um, I suppose, yes, I was going to ask what the, the, the medical effect of... Med <laughs> I don't know what's going wrong with that. <laughs> I normally can speak, okay. Um, so... Um, it's cerebral palsy that um, you suffer from. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 It's. I'm just trying to think. I'm. Um, so professionally, I'm a. Well. I've spent. 25 years teaching uh, computers, computers most of the time. Um, I'm not currently teaching at the moment. Um, but I do remember, yeah, some of the students I had, um, but it was a long time ago. And I, I think, I think we did have a student with cerebral palsy, but I, I, I can't specifically remember, but um, um I just yeah, remember um, actively, motionally, I think they had different, um, well, this guy did have diff, um, um, uh, some problems with his um, movement. Exactly. I can't really remember. Sorry. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Not that it matters, but um, it's, um, no, it's fascinating to see that, um, yeah, you're, your your writing this and um, publishing it and um, and and have more ideas in the in the in the pipeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. There are there are five more books in the pipeline, but I think that's what's incredible. And when when I first met Gavin, um, which was back last year, um, because my background is in music, same as Gavin, we both have music backgrounds. Um, and I was a mentor at a new music school at the time, so Gavin was in the audience. So we kind of seen each other. Um, and then we actually exchanged on Twitter at the time. And he'd seen that I am a publisher of children's books. So um, he got in touch. And I think within a few weeks, we'd met. And he told me that he had almost a publishing deal on the table, but they were going to charge him 5000 to do that publishing. And I'm... I hate that. I don't like vanity publish taking vanity publishers taking advantage of new entrepreneurs who who think that they're going to do absolutely everything to get their book on the shelves and they promise you the world and it really does not happen. Mm. So because I have 14 books published myself so I was like I can do this. I 
I want to do this for you because I 100% believe in your story and the difference that it can make. So we kind of, we've done a collaboration on this. So there's been no money involved. This is something that we have both done as a team together, because I think it is so important to have a book like this on the market. So um, yeah, we, we worked very, very hard yeah, for I I think three months solidly from I think I was sat at my desk from eight o'clock in the morning till 10 or 11 o'clock at the night, illustrating, all hand-drawn. Um, Gavin has done an incredible job in helping to market the book as well. He has hounded everyone possible <laughs> to pay attention to this book. And you see all the, the Amazon reviews, he's made sure that they were gonna happen. So I think as a team, we, we're just great. We're both on the same page. We both want the book to make a difference it's it's not about the money it's about the story and the message and mm. the end goal for the book so um yeah i think i think that's what makes a book to be honest with you you have to be a team when it comes to it and yeah i think i understand i understand yeah when we first met his mother came along because he was afraid that i wouldn't understand him um, I'm actually profoundly deaf on one side, so I've got used to lip reading my whole life. So oh, I right. kind of, we just clicked off the, <laughs> off the top, we just clicked and yeah, we've just, um, we worked together for, well, it's probably, probably been eight, nine months now. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm super proud of him. I'm incredibly proud of, he inspires me massively. When I actually see his even though he has cerebral palsy, and I think this is the biggest misconception with disability, and this is why I love his book, that he does not let anything stop him. Mm. He goes for absolutely everything. And he, yeah, he is a massive inspiration for me. So, um, yeah, I'm incredibly proud of him. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. I'm very curious actually, about, about the, the content of the book. Um, I want to know, I'll probably have to read it. <laughs> Um, um, is um, yeah, where does the magic come from? I'm, I'm asking really silly questions, <laughs> but I, yeah, it, yeah, how does, yeah, if you're making a wish, who are you making, who's he making the wish to, or shouldn't, shouldn't I ask that question? <laughs> well, it's yourself, well, really, isn't it? Yeah, me, I make a wish. We, we, uh, we all, all, all read, and I read, uh, 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 and then... Yes, he's on holiday, and he's a fortune teller. <laughs> yeah, and then for me, you're all, you're all from there. Wow. So, yeah. So, I suppose uh, the whole idea really is what is fantastic about the book is he's asking to be accepted. Um, yeah. he's, he's, he's starting, um, he's moving into a school year and he asks the fortune teller when he's on holiday, can, can he grant, can she grant the wish that he's going to be accepted by children and he's going to be the same as other children. And on the journey, he discovers that he actually is okay and his wish has already been granted. He knew all along he was accepted. And I suppose that's the message to, to others with a disability is that you're okay as you are, you know, don't try to be like everybody else mm -hmm. who you are is okay. So that was, that's the message really. And that's kind of the message for the children that, you know, just because you have a disability doesn't mean you can't still have friends and you can't do well in school and you can't dream and you can't, you know, Want, want to do stuff with your life and then the message I suppose for the parents is as Gavin would say and he says in his blogs don't wrap them up in cotton wool yeah. allow them to still dream and allow them to still explore and and live you know a, a disability shouldn't stop you from from wanting to do all those things so that's kind of the whole idea of the book and um, and just mm. the the messages and yeah, I suppose the, the lunar note comes along the way. So, um, and it's based on on your your real life. So it's yeah. it's really what he's experienced. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's true to life. The story is exactly what he's been through. Oh, 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 oh.
Mm. Yeah. What happens to you? Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry. Can you say the, those last couple of things again? Only because. Um, oh, I can't remember what I, they said. I have a hearing disability, <laughs> so I'm making that up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is my second meeting today, so it's been a long day. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Um, yeah, just just how the, the book is very true to life. It's, it's Gavin has actually oh, okay. experienced his life so i mean if you do read his blogs which um is on his website um is it gavin clifton writer.com um yeah. so you you'll find all his blogs um so you will actually be able to relate to the blogs than the book because he uses a lot of the references from his blogs as you know the journey within the book as well so um yeah and all over his facebook all over his his Twitter, all over his mm -hmm. Instagram. He loves to mm. post. <laughs> and tag me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so what's the, if um, listeners want to um, uh, look at some of his blog, uh, where, where will they find that? What's the address of his uh, blog? On oh. his website. So it's Gavin Clifton writer.com that's correct right gavin gavin clifton gavin yeah. clifton writer.com yeah. yeah we have the link to the books on there and the book it will be books we have the link to the book. um and the blogs find the blogs i mean again we're at the stage where we're building his author profile his author platform so that's what we're doing it's um yeah, the downtime, I think, with COVID gives you enough time to do that. Although, yeah, I mean, on average, they reckon self-publishers sell between 90 and 100 books in a lifetime of, 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 um, of a book. And we've sold treble, quadruple that already within um, a month, two months of, of release. So, um, yeah, there's definitely, and that's probably just keeping it local. So there has been some press with all this as well, but... Yeah, COVID is kind of taking over everything and they just want to write about COVID at the moment. So, um, yeah, it's, yeah, we'll see. I mean, that's the whole, that's the whole plan, getting the strategies in place and marketing strategies, promotional strategies. That's what we're working on for the right target audience. And I think that's key, making sure the book gets to the right people. So, um, yeah, that's the plan anyway. If COVID <laughs> starts to behave and gives us yeah. a break. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine that's, well, I suppose it's, um, sorry, uh, I'm thinking of the target market. I'm just thinking children, but, you know, it's very, it's not as vague as that, is it? Um, no, uh, it's not. And that's what I said to that. Knowing and understanding your market is, for us, it's not just children. It's actually the parents yeah. of um, children with disabilities and the carers that look after children with disabilities so so they understand from a child's perspective what they're going through mm. um because like we said i think it's very easy and gavin has referenced to this many times in his blogs that you tend to wrap a child up in cotton wool when they have a disability because you want to protect them mm. and that's that's not what the child wants so in gavin's book that's what he tries to express that don't wrap Yep, in cotton wool. Like I, I want to be like everybody else. So I, and I think that's what he's trying to get at in reference to the book. That as a carer who's looking after a child with a disability or a parent is read the book and and learn from a child's perspective. That's mm. that's kind of where he's he's um, taking the book, which is very interesting actually, because I suppose a lot of people wouldn't buy the book thinking that's the way to look at it. But um, yeah, we've had grown men messaging and saying they've read three, four pages in and they're already bawling. <laughs> we've had some really crazy messages that yeah. have come through. But just out of how people have approached the book and how they've, they've looked at it from a completely different perspective, mm. because it is written by someone who has lived and breathed this disability. And I suppose sometimes you read articles and in newspapers and it's maybe it's what you would you would think someone's going through with a disability but from the mouth of someone with a disability it makes a massive difference 
and that's the feedback we're getting. Mm. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, no, I was just thinking generally, actually, um, generally, I think children are overprotected in a way that wasn't like it was. <laughs> I was, I was going to say back in my day. That's crazy, though. I just mean, um, so 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, I think children would were much freer, really, to make go out in the world and make their own mistakes. You know, parents were there protecting them. Um, but, um, yeah, I think it's easy for parents to overprotect, even when there's nothing wrong with their children. Um, yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when, uh, well, when your child has a dis disability as well, I think, yeah, for some, yeah, it, that tendency to really not let them be who they can be and be overprotecting <laughs> can get over the top. I don't know, though. It's not really, yeah, it's not much a note thing, something I much, <laughs> God, I, can't, I can't speak for <laughs> Um, yeah, it's just not, I'm interested, I have to say that. <laughs> well, you have to read the book to understand where we're coming from, so, um, yeah. Yeah, that's... no, it does. No, it sounds fantastic. So, um, probably, um, where can I get a copy of the book? You can get it on Amazon. That was the first platform that we released to. I and mean, that's the biggest bookstore in the world. So you have to be in the biggest bookstore in the world. Um, so Amazon, you can actually buy yep. it on Amazon. Max and the Magic Wish. Um, you can okay. buy it on Gavin's website. Um, and it comes in an ebook and a physical format as well. Um, and we're actually releasing the audio book as well. So we have a fantastic... Um, it's Kate Powell. She's incredible. So she's already done one version of the audio book. Um, but what we come across with the book um, and what you have to really think of when you're considering more books is you have to be consistent on the character as well. Mm. And um, what, what wasn't put into the first book was a speech impediment. Um, and obviously with cerebral palsy, it's, it's different levels of speech impediments. Um, and that wasn't put into the book. So obviously the second book that is lined up, there is a speech impediment in the book. So we had to go back and review the first book. Um, and unfortunately the audio we, we did in the beginning, it didn't have a speech impediment in it. So we're gonna have to just go back and do a little few tweaks to make sure that it's consistent right throughout. But it's incredible. Uh, when I first heard it, it, it gave me goosebumps. It was. She sounds incredible on it. She gets the characters perfect. And that's another another um, release we're going to be doing with Max and the Magic Wish as well. So, um, yeah, it, we're excited about that. So all on Amazon. Um, and we are, we are going to be going through um, other platforms as well um, to make sure that's available on other platforms. But, I mean, you have to be in the biggest bookstore in the world, first of all. I mean, it has 80% of market. So, um, yeah. So Amazon is where you can buy it. And then, um, yeah, the plan is, is to get it, you know, in hopefully some, some great bookstores within Wales starting off as well. So that, and we're thinking of maybe making the Welsh version of it as well. So we've got loads planned so that we're actually supporting the Welsh book market as well for children in Wales as well. So that's, that's another. Okay. Thing. Yeah. Um, so are you releasing one in Welsh? So, sorry. Yeah, that, that's that's the aim. We're going to convert the book into into Welsh as well, so we can actually get to the book market in Wales as well. So um, so yeah, we have lots lots of plans for it. There's yes. a very big book market in in Wales for the Welsh market. So um, yeah, and again, it, it's it's staying within Wales and making sure that the book gets to the right target audience, whether it's in English or Welsh. So mm. um. Yeah, that's something we've um, we're definitely going to be doing this year as well. Wow, so um, yeah, no, it's fascinating. It just sounds like you have lots and lots of plans and ideas, and you know, work, more, well, more work to do really, and to get to where you want to go. It's, um, it's oh, it's endless. That, that it never stops. <laughs> it <laughs> never stops. I suppose that that's what you have to do. I mean, you have to 
test the market to see how it's going and yeah i mean um it's a it's a brilliant book to be able to get into into the welsh market as well to i mean it is all about making a difference that's the aim for the book making a difference and yeah if we have to do that in the welsh market as well then we would that's that's one of our plans so um but it is it's it's what it, traditional publishers do as well so even from a self-publishing perspective it's what traditional publishers do you know you have the audio books and the ebooks the physical books it's just the part we can't do is the physical meeting people we can't do the promo events so um yeah we'll see <laughs> we, we do this every time we meet we keep our fingers crossed <laughs> yeah uh yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, probably better I don't start ranting about that. Um, <laughs> you think it's worth <laughs> it's, um, well, I won't, I will stop myself. Um, but um, um, I'm very keen actually to, yeah, get a copy of this book and send it to my son. Um, uh, I think it's probably better, yeah, I buy it and send it to her because uh, I was thinking, would, uh, uh, would you sign one and write a note? But I'm thinking it's probably better, yeah, I just write a few words to him before I send it. Uh, but uh, yeah, just um, what wish would you like to make, Max? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's, um, it's a great book. Very proud of it. Very proud that I know Gavin. He's doing incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I tell him that all the time. He has a massive <laughs> ego from it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. It's really good. It's lovely to speak with you both. And uh, yeah, I'm quite excited. Um, I, uh, I'll be honest, though, I haven't spoken to my son Max for a few months only because. The, the times have become difficult and he's living up in uh, Bracknell of all places, but um, okay. it's not far from London. Um, but um, um, yeah, I'm very keen to get a copy of your book and yeah, send it to <laughs> my own sort of a... Uh... I, I don't think we have any copies, do we? I think we're completely sold out of everything and yeah, with the printing process at the moment there's massive delays because of covid as well so that's why we're always having to direct everyone online because it's covid has destroyed everything to us it's destroyed the, the the process of getting the books very quickly so that's another good thing why we can't actually do a lot of events because there's such a big backlog and a delay with, yeah with well that's part of the reason for the people that are promoting covid it's dehumanizing. Yeah. So obviously I follow alternative news that isn't the BBC. <laughs> so I, I, I just one of those that really wants to know the truth of what is really happening with this. And it goes to the Gateses and what they're really behind. The Rockefellers. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, so you're going that side of everything <laughs> yes the big money owners of uh but uh i did hear that that gates has come forward and says he has nothing to do with this i did i read that the other day um not sure but i i did i i read that the other day i think it was on the <laughs> daily Mail, so again i don't know if you actually if you if you listen to the daily mail but apparently that's where i read it he's come forward and said that he has nothing to do with with covid yeah but he's totally untrustworthy he lies and uh his computer is well okay i've got a mute <laughs> they're not his anymore but my dell laptop uh my microsoft laptop <laughs> um there's a dell laptop running microsoft um oh yeah it's full of viruses and that's a big problem with it but um, obviously he's just finding a new playground for his viruses and, and doesn't really know that field. So he's uh, experimenting badly. <laughs> but uh, I am hopeful. I think more people are sort of waking up, um, really at least 
I am finding that. I'm finding less people wearing masks, for example. Um, I know that so certain businesses are sort of trapped and caught in it. Um, it becomes a legal requirement. Um, but um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just looking for the. Well, I, I actually, I have to say, I laughed earlier on. I was driving. And I found it very funny because everyone that drove past me just had masks on in their car. <laughs> and yeah. I literally, oh, I, had to, I had to just a real moment where I was thinking to myself, wow, like, how did we what? get here? How is this our life right now? Like, it's, I, I actually laughed in my car because I found it surreal. I just yeah. couldn't believe what I was seeing and what is going on. It was, it was just, it was a bit of a mad moment for me. I, mean, I leave the house every day and I come into my office. I mean, I'm in my vocal booth at the moment, but I don't see anyone. I have my own office, so there's nobody in my building. I'm by myself every single day. So, and then I get in my car and I go home and it's dark. So I don't see anything. I don't see anybody. Mm. And it's, it's sad. It's, it's very sad. So, um, yeah, I, I want this to be over very quickly. I think yeah. we all need just a little bit of normality and oh, I just don't see it. I don't see it this year, which makes me sad. And we had a conversation earlier on about this, that yeah. what it's stopping you from achieving as well is, um, yeah, it's incredibly sad. I, I don't know anymore. I think I'm a little bit numb to it all. I've, I've lost the anger. I had the anger last year and that's I know, gone. yes, I know what you mean. And now I'm just a bit numb to it. I, I don't know yeah. what to anymore. So now I'm just like, okay, just do what you need to do and wake up one morning and you pray that it's just all back to normal. I don't think that's going to happen, but that's my way of looking at it. So yeah, I think I've, I've lost the anger. I was very angry last year because mm -hmm. so much yeah. like, mm -hmm. I couldn't do and <laughs> I didn't understand. I was 40 last year and I couldn't, I had to do it over, I had a viral birthday. <laughs> yeah. And I was just like, wow. So I had major birthdays in my family last year. We couldn't celebrate one of them. So, um, yeah, it's, um, that, that's when I got a little bit angry um, because I'd sung my whole life and I worked continuously. I'd never had a social life. And then when I retired from music and I started to have a life, COVID hit. So I haven't had a life in two years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's why I got a bit angry because it's like, yeah, I don't sing anymore. And I still can't have a life. So, um, yeah, I, <laughs> I think that's where my anger come from. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it just affects people differently. Um, I remember I was... I went, well, yeah, my, my anger's different. And I was, um, became quite swearing <laughs> when anyone was telling me to put a mask on. I would, I would just take that, well, I suppose because I'd read and seen that actually a face mask does, doesn't actually, the size of a, a virus particle will just go through anything face masking. So they're yeah. utterly pointless. There's absolutely no point wearing them. Yet there's a few industries that are insisting on wearing them, which yeah. to me is just utterly insane. But um, yeah, I remember I was very cross about it. <laughs> yeah, it's very surreal. It's, um, I don't know what to say on it anymore. I don't, I feel like I don't watch the news anymore. So I, I don't want to get angry about it either. I. I, I'm just existing at the moment, doing what I need to do and hoping within, you know, maybe September time we're, we're able to meet and I don't know, I'm, I'm convincing myself of that and it's probably not true. So I, I'm just, I kind of say this because I'm hoping that's what it's going to be, but I, I don't yeah. know. I don't know anymore. And that's what happens. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think we'll just have more things to worry about as the yeah. economy totally collapses and yeah. all businesses become bankrupt and disappear and vanish and there's no jobs anywhere for anyone. So I think we'll just have, oh, and then an ice age as the Maunder minimum mm -hmm. comes in and next year freezes the, uh, the, basically freezes the world for 30 years. 
Oh goodness. Well, okay. I I don't have any babies yet, and I'm not married, so please don't wish all this on me because I need <laughs> this right now. <laughs> That was another one of my things. I was like, okay, when I retired from music, I was going to find a husband, I was going to have babies. And then COVID hit and I was like, it's never going to happen. <laughs> I've not left the house for two years. <laughs> so, um, I'm sure, yeah, that's, yeah. that's why I got very angry. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there are lots of people feeling the same, actually. And I think things will come what's going to be back to normal. Um, <laughs> A new normal. I, no, sorry, I hate that yeah. phrase. <laughs> I just can't That's stand right, it. Right. A new normal, whatever that is. I don't yeah, know it doesn't mean anything. Um, I think we just have to stay positive. That's all we can do. Stay yeah. positive and and be a way out of it. We yeah. hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do what we can, and what you're doing is fantastic. You know, you've been productive and creative, and um, yeah, growing. And um, yeah, I look very much. As again, I suddenly stopped yeah, being able to speak. Um, yeah, I look, um, yeah, very, I can't speak. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, I look forward very much to getting a copy of your book. So I'm going to, um, yeah, that's my job for the rest of the day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, we appreciate that. Actually, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm sure Gavin appreciates that. Given yeah. the platform, I like, to be able to... Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, well. Look forward yeah. to it, and thank you very much for your time. It's been lovely talking with you both. Yeah, I look forward to yeah reading your book and making some wishes. Thank you so much. Anyway. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. And now it's time for some hilarious comedy on Everyman Radio. And now it's time for some hilarious comedy on Everyman Radio. Fantastic Techno Gadget Ball Show is proudly sponsored by WebsContent.com. Fast, secure, and reliable. Fast, secure, and reliable web hosting from WebsContent. Hi. <laughs> yeah, that was. Welcome to the Techno Gadget Ball Show. And in today's show, oh yeah, we're going to, oh yeah, I'm hosting a new show, within the show, within the show. <laughs> yeah. So, here's the jingle. Let's start the jingle. Techno Gadget. Techno Gadget ball, yeah, yeah. Mm. Hosted by Techno Gadget Ball. For, have I got Bella? Uh, well, it, it will just, it'll just press play. I don't have it. And the jingle went a bit funny. It wasn't quite. It missed the lies part. I suppose that's quite what it's supposed to be. It's like, have I got news for you? But have I got lies for you? But. It's just meant to be kind of news. Oh yeah, and then I want to play some news. I don't know if it's gonna work. So I'll just press this. Ah, oh, that's okay, the, the mango has a plan. Well, what is it, mango? Are you not saying anything? Oh. Well, I've got a good jingle. <laughs> so let's play some music.
and um, I need some guests. Uh, I haven't got any. Got some print sticks. Oh, my favourite instrument, a hammer. This is perfect hammer for. I don't know. So, I'm going to kind of start and play a little bit of news. It's not really news, it's more this guy that knows a lot about what's going on. Oh, yeah, and big financial crash happening because the whole financial system is corrupt. And all this COVID stuff is all basically lies uh, because it's covering up the fact that the whole economy is just about to crash. Next week, I think Wednesday. <laughs> Okay, my beautiful friends, and you are all freaking beautiful. Seriously, it is Friday, February 12th, 2021. I got to do it. I got to do it yet again. It's incredible. Every day this week, new record highs, new record closing highs for the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. It's freak show. It's a freak show that is going to end very badly, very, very badly. As a matter of fact, and I'll talk about more, more about this in a moment, the Federal Reserve right now is preparing for a potential massive crash of the stock market. That's the truth. And again, I'll talk about that in a minute. So let's, um, let's do it. We got new record high. So, uh, enjoy. Thank you for watching, Mr. Technica Dubois, and uh, see you again soon. The Techno Gadget Boar Show. The tech podcast to help you upgrade your ZX Spectrum and Commodore 64. New music. small town 